Cherries are still hunting for their first win this season. And we go to a ground next where we've never left happy. Tom can fill you in on that. Welcome to the Big Match Preview. This is Back of the Net. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. We're an AFC Bournemouth fan channel, and if you detect a slightly hoarse voice, it's because we were all raging in the week when we played West Ham United in the Carabao Cup, mm. and it was a handball goal. Yeah, I was going to say, mate, I know you've got a bit of a sore throat, but I've got to hand it to you for how you did that monologue at the start. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I get a little bit fed up of it, I've got to be honest, and I'm just praying that nothing like that happens at the weekend. Because, yeah, I think it's... The, the Forest one's a little bit different, but I think three games, we've been the better side in all three. Um, we definitely need to be better in front of goal, no doubt about that. But we've done enough in front of goal against Newcastle, and it got ruled out. And yeah. then we've done enough to, to get the game to go to at least penalties um, against West Ham. And, yeah, they, they handballed it in. So, really frustrating. I really I said after the game, and I just really feel for Andoni. You can see in his interviews, he's just so angry. He does yeah. really well to keep his cool. But... Um, I just, yeah, really feel for him because they've put massive shifts in in all three games and, you know, we haven't got, we haven't got a win from it. And, um, yeah, so a real blow for him because I think they've done, I think all, I've been really impressed with the performances, actually. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, last time at Goodison was a horror show, but we played them at home since then. And that, no, it wasn't so bad. We got the three points. Here's what happened. <laughs> Tom, I say we got the three points. We conspired to not get the three points, but thanks to a late own goal, mm. we did get three vital points. Yeah, it was uh, at the time. And you know what? I mean, I've got to tie this into conversations with regards to our transfer business, and that goal that we conceded mm. was probably down to our keeper. I'm not sure if there's going to be a little E by his name on who scored. Mm. There probably should be, but that was one of his errors. And uh, yeah, we managed to thankfully yeah. win the game 2-1. And even, actually, if I think back to the 3-0 at Goodison Park as well. He didn't have a great game. No, he didn't. No, but um, as you say, mate, yeah, it goes in a conversation because we gather ease of the lager. Get in there. Now, I buzz about that. He's a, you know, he's a, a calibre of goalkeeper. I like the fact, I've said this before in terms of, I think I said it about Evan Ilson on one of the last shows, that... Yeah. The main thing for me is to see if they're an Andoni fit. Mm. And I think the fact that Andoni knows him, and Kemper said that a lot in his interview, didn't he? I think um, is really important. Um, yeah, there's obviously things that certain clubs, I mean, these are clubs like Real Madrid and Chelsea who have probably got higher standards for their goalkeepers. Right. Um, but he's obviously one we wanted. He's most expensive goalkeeper for a reason. So, um, yeah, really hope. That, I think it's a, a no-brainer getting him on a, on a loan. So, really hoping he'll step up. And hopefully he'll be straight in at the weekend. Could you negate the fact that he's the most expensive goalkeeper because it's Chelsea and they just throw money about anyway? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. But then um, I don't think, you know, regardless of how much you played, I don't think um, when he fell out of favour, Real Madrid don't just go for you. Yeah. For you. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's clearly a goalkeeper in there. Um, I think, you know, we obviously know our kind of issues there and I think it's clearly an upgrade but how much of an upgrade we will have to see but um, yeah excited to excited to see him mate and I'm glad they got that one over the line um, plenty of outgoings even since mm. the West Ham game mate um, so it'd be interesting to see what happens in the build up to this but I'm hoping Kev has come in with enough time to play in that game mm. um, but yeah Good luck to Joe Nantney. Yeah. Um, we know that was kind of on the cards for a bit, linking back up with Parker, but really pleased for him to go and hopefully play play football again in the Championship. I think he'll do well. Gavin Kilkenny, delighted. Obviously, he's gone on a permanent, yeah. so we won't ever have him back, but delighted for him to just get a move. And I mean, we all know the calibre of player. He should be far better than League Two. But fair play to him for going, I need to step down because I'm not doing it when I've had my loan. So where's he going? Swindon on loan. Uh, sure Swindon on a permanent, sorry. Make sure you say hello to Kerry and Kern for me, Gav. 
Yeah. Who? I love them. Kerry and Curtin. Oh, this country. And yeah. he will be playing in midfield with Namdi Offerbore, potentially. Oh, OK, right. He's also wow. Swindon. So, um, yeah, good luck to Gav. Good luck to Jane. It looks like, when we're recording, it's not quite over the line, but I think it probably will be by the time this is out, because I believe he's at a medical. Daniel mm. Jebison. Uh, to Watford, which I think is another good move for him, good yeah. move for Watford. And what I will say about Jebo is, and Donny said it himself, that we delayed the loan because of Unal's injury, because even Ilsen obviously only just come in and Solanke left. And he helped us because yeah. I still look back to that Forest game. As much as Jebison had been incredible, I look back and go, I reckon in hindsight he had started Jebison. Yeah. Because then Semenya would have been wide where he ended up getting his goal and was brilliant against Newcastle. So... I think Jebbers has helped us. He's helped us kind of not have to rush even Ilson. We played Jebbo for a half against West Ham. I thought he'd done all right. So, yeah, hopefully he does well. See what happens there. And there's still a few more in there. Chris Meppham, David Brooks, Philip Still quite Billing, a few. Still quite that, a few. That, that might want to go. So, um, yeah, could be an interesting end to the window. So, Tom, tell me about why we've never left Goodison Park happy. Because we have won there before. Yeah, when we won there, obviously no fans were there anyway. We got relegated anyway. Let's check out our head to head. Uh, it's good as in park. It's not pretty. The other way round. Yeah, I was gonna say it's good at home, isn't it? It's not too bad at all. But there, mm. we've really struggled. Now, um, I remember chatting to Roger Bennett um, from Men in Blazers, and we were talking about the Everton game where they had to win to stay in the league. They won one nil, mm. and he said, "You know, your guys tried bloody hard that day." And I was thinking, "Did we?" I, I thought well, we honestly. were actually quite poor well, last season. We were definitely poor. Oh, shocking. And I, I know we've mentioned Neto, but, you know, Zabani had an error, slipped and let them in. There were It was error strewn oh, and we weren't great up top either. I think you know, Dango was, was in on goal, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Sitter, Solanke should have been more clinical as well. I, so many people. We'd probably go off the top of my head. I'd probably go as far as saying that's our worst performance under Andoni yeah. Arola, yeah. Really, really bad. I think at the start of the season, obviously, we had that time to adapt. Yeah. Well, I thought in some games, we we didn't get the result, but I thought, oh, there were signs there. Do you remember, like, Brentford, they scored last kick. And, mm. But the Everton game, we were absolutely appalling. It was awful all over the pitch. Um, and, yeah, as I say, and then the last, the only time we won there I was the most gutted I've ever been at Everton, like, <laughs> seeing it, obviously, on the telly. But because we got relegated, so that was um, old Hawkeye season, wasn't yeah. it? Cheers, Nyland, cheers, Villa. Um, but, yeah, we've, we've never done well, well at Goodison at all, mate. So we've had some really big beans. I remember one where... I um, can't remember what year it was. Ross Barkley celebrating before we put it in. Was that the 6-3? Yeah, they got murdered. Um, so yeah, we've had some bad ones at Goodison. So they will probably be looking at it and going, they need a turn in fortunes. Probably no better team to play in terms of the omen. Well, look, let's check out their results this season. And look, they started off at home against Brighton. Mm. And it was an unknown quantity in Brighton, really. New manager, a lot yeah. of new personnel. They got absolutely yeah. boosted, didn't they? I think... It's a difficult one because don't get me wrong, you shouldn't be losing 3 0 at home on the first day and then losing 4 0, obviously, it was at Tottenham. But both of them sides, I would argue, Brighton then beat Man United. Yeah. Um, and, and Tottenham, yeah, they, they didn't beat Leicester, but, but Tottenham played some good stuff and they're a good side. So even though I think Everton are not in a good place, let's not try and sugarcoat it, they haven't scored a goal in either of them games and they've got battered. They're, they're tough games. They're tough games, um, and Brighton do look better than maybe I anticipated. But then in the League Cup, they were nil nil with Doncaster Rovers for quite a oh, while, uh, weren't they? And that and that and that's where I was thinking, you know what? I hope Everton do win this because otherwise there's going to be a hell of a reaction on Saturday. So potentially hoping that's maybe tempered the anger a little bit. And there has been a lot of anger, as you could see from some of the clips that have been mm. circulating on social media with the players getting onto uh, the coach. I think it was a train, actually. Yeah. And a few, I would say, isolated fans, not the Everton no. fans that we've ever engaged with or even experienced in the comments, because as a club, I think they're brilliant mm. and they're a lovely fan base. Like and subscribe. Um, but they were, yeah, yeah they were being more than harsh. Yeah, and it, it felt, felt like it was like the subs as well. It was like the, back, the ones that hadn't yeah. really done much. Like, but anyway, don't get me wrong. I'm sure, a lot of them players are really flat to deceive because a lot have for Everton, so I'm sure they're annoyed. But yeah, it did feel a little bit over the top. And as expected, Neil Morpay's had a little bit of a go back. As soon as I saw his Morpay, I thought, yeah, going to let that lie. You know what he's like. Um, and it does look like he's set to go to Marseille as well. Um, mm. Good move for him, by the way. I don't think he's that good. Mm. But yeah, he looks like he's he's off off um, following that. So yeah, it's, it's a really tough one for everyone. I did actually, because obviously League Cup, and that was they played the night before we did. Yeah. And you can kind of watch any game, and I was kind of flirting around a few. And I switched it on a nil-nil because I thought, oh, this, we got them soon. This is like a tight game. The others were kind of comfortable. But then I only watched the second half and Everton were just far too good for Doncaster. So yeah. don't know what to gauge from it, really. There was a few players that 
maybe are not starting all the time. But I thought, oh, they might get a shout now, as you'll see with my team news. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a hard one for them to gauge. They're not going to look too much into that Doncaster game. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really weird one. We look at our record there. We look at the fact that Everton need a bounce back. But then I also go, but you look at the performances, we should have too much. I would hope so. But I've said that before at Everton. I definitely yeah. have. We'll see how it pans out. As you can see, we're at the QP, the Queen's Park, mm -hmm. the most local place to get a beer outside the stadium. And it's one of the cheapest places you can buy a it's pint massive. on match day. I mm -hmm. tell you what, the AFCB burger went down a storm mm -hmm. at the weekend and people were buying all sorts. And it was really nice to see. We it's were here. after the game as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. We were here yeah. pre-match, post-match as well. And if you check in the comments, the pinned comments of our last Premier League preview, you can see who won the various competitions we had because we uh, we gave away a couple of meals, didn't we? We did indeed. Two meals for two. And we do that for every mm. home game here. But look, this is a pub, right? But you know what it also is, Tom? What is it? It's our studio, right? It it's our studio. And you know what? I think we need to improve it. Just needs a bit, a bit of liquor paint, mate, and certain colours, I think. Yeah, certain colours. I mean, I'm thinking red and maybe a little bit of black. Just shout from you. And this is where we need your help because we are going to arrange, hopefully over international break, mm. a chance for you viewers and ideally people that have got a little bit of experience with either painting or sanding and making places look nice we're going to do out this whole room yeah we know what we're going to do with the bottom bits under the dado rail i'm glad i said that right because that could have been x-rated there yeah, we're nice. going to do red and black slats and then we're going to take away the dartboard for now don't worry it's not going completely loads of frames up yeah murals and stencils and stuff we're going to get them all up on the and have this as a shrine to afc Bournemouth. Yeah. now a lot of people kindly donated stuff at the end of last season. And if you're willing to, you know, donate any frames or anything like that, yeah. we'll have a plaque on the wall so you know it's yours. Okay? Yeah, of course. Um, we, would, we would love to, you know, put it on the walls and make this place look absolutely superb yeah. because we're really, yeah, just aiming to make this place, firstly, mm. a brilliant pub, but you know, secondly, a good studio as well. Yeah, it's been a really nice, like, kind of feels like a home for us, doesn't it, to yeah. do our recording, which is great. Joe is brilliant. And, yeah, and it's, I mean, it's next to the football stadium, so it makes perfect sense to get a bit more of a Bournemouth vibe in there. I think they do pretty well already. Yeah. But, yeah, this kind of is, like, the, the secondary room, I guess. Um, so, kindly, Joe has said that we can kind of make this our own. Um, and, yeah, and we'll get our heads together, won't we? Look at a, a kind of day, a bit of a plan. Like you said, hopefully during the international break, it makes most sense. Get down, help us out. You know, come on, sort of get in here, get stuck in. Yeah, no, but no, I'm looking forward to it, mate. It'll be, it'll be good fun. Okay, so let's take a close look from an AFC Bournemouth perspective at what Everton have done over the summer, mate. It's a difficult one with, with Everton because it always feels like they don't quite do enough. Right. Remains to be seen on the on the signings. I mean, letting Anana go was it was tough for them. They were never going to keep hold of him, but I, I, do, I do think he's a good player. They did manage to get Irabunan, that's yes. how you pronounce it, in part of that deal, really. And to be fair to him, I think he's going to be a good player. I've said this to Villa fans, and they kind of felt it as well, but he just couldn't quite get in the team. And yeah. respect to him, he wanted to go and play a bit more. And he was one of the standouts in the game I watched in the Cup as well. So I think he could get himself in there. Um, they lost Godfrey, or I couldn't believe he got moved to Atlanta, to be honest, mm. but fair enough. Um, and I think, yeah. Got a bit of money for him, though, did they? Yeah, I think they got over 10 mil for him. Yeah. So yeah, fair play. But um, hasn't been a lot. That, um, he hasn't. He's not going to play, but Asmir Begovic is back there. Oh, love of that. course, Asmir. We love you, Asmir. Hopefully, goalkeepers like when we do a warm up on the bench, but I love it if he did, just say hello. Be we love Asmir Begovic down here. But um, yeah, they signed uh, Jacob Bryan, who I haven't seen an awful lot of from, from Leon, who's a potentially excited one. Lindstrom as well on loan. I quite like, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Ndia? Ndia? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, got him from France, but he's previously at um, Sheffield United. And yeah, I think there's, when he was at Sheffield United, I thought there was, was a player there. Um, and he, yeah, I think I think he could. They could find something with him. I really, really do. So yeah, I, I still they might get a little bit more done right at the end. But yeah, it does feel a little bit like it's underwhelming for the Everton fans are used to it. I, mm. I do kind of feel for Everton fans. It sounds stupid because they're a Premier League club, yeah, they're a massive course, club. Yeah. But I just feel like I don't know. I, I feel like transfer winners are always underwhelming every season. They think right, 
let's go, let's go, let's go. And they're always just where they always are. Then last season, obviously, you get deductions. I mean, it's just it just feels like a bit of a mess. And they're always dogs with rumours of deductions mm-hmm. as well. But, you know, surely Sean Dyche is the man to see you out of that mess because he's got a sort of galvanising effect, hasn't he? Galvanising effect, definitely. He's a man that will keep you in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, would he do any... I mean, it's actually a little bit disrespectful when people say, could he take you any higher? Because actually, he nearly got Burnley, like, Europe. I mean, he did get them a He did, and then they just went out straight away. Yeah. But, yeah, he's, he's clearly a good manager. I, I do think... Yeah, I do, I do think that, that, that at Goodison, it gets... Like you say, we've had some bad ones there, and then get it rocking there, and it's just they just haven't quite kicked on, have they? Obviously, well, I remember when they got Ancelotti in not long ago. Yeah, I know. They just can't seem to springboard it, and um, they're getting to this stage now where I think outsiders and people that obviously support other Premier League clubs go, I oh, just relegate them because that is it's, and it's not a harsh way, I don't think. It's just because they always just stay up. And there's there's almost a, they deserve a bit of credit for that. They always find a way. And now, right this second, if you said to me, where Everton are going to finish, I'll go, yeah, 17. I think they'll Probably. just stay up. I think they'll do it again. But you know what? I've, I've said this time and time again. They don't want to be starting a new season in a new stadium yeah. because it, it was going to be planned. I think that they were going to move into Bramley Moore Dock for this season, yeah, not quite ready. I think it's going to be ready in about January, February. And by the way, that facility looks incredible. Mm. I saw some of the drone shots of it, and it almost looked like they didn't have enough space for the pitch. Right, but okay. it's so, so enclosed and really tight. So it keeps that sort of close-knit feel that Goodison Park has. Yeah. And that place is going to generate a hell of an it's atmosphere. Got but in the Premier League. it will be ready. In August, and I, I, I pray for them Yeah, not even that um, it is a venue that hosts Premier League football. It's Definitely. going to have seating for uh, under 53,000 fans, which is huge for them. I mean, that's a, certainly an upgrade on, mm. on what they've got. And it's going to be the last time that we visit the grand old lady yeah, it is actually, yeah, that is Goodison like. Park. And mm. it's there aren't many grounds like it anymore, are there? There aren't no. many grounds where, that sort of um, you know give you a, a, you know, a whiff and an odour of... The old Dean Court where we went, like nostalgic kind of yeah. kind of feel. Definitely, I do always feel that at, at Goodison. It does have that about it, and it is still one of my. I'd probably say, in terms of them, kind of like say classic. You know, what I'm trying to say Premier League grounds. I I always go to good. I always go Goodison, Villa Park. Yeah, they're yeah. like the two that I just feel yeah. something about. So yes, I, I completely forgot that would be the last time we go there, mate. So maybe we can finally leave there happy for once on our last trip. Um, Let's we'll hope see. so. There was a, you know what, like one of their stewards actually, um, I won't tell you what club he supports, but he um, flagged me down as I walked in. I do think you remember this. And yeah. said, I love your channel, mate. Mm, I love like, that. But he's got a YouTube channel himself. Yeah, that's he's got right. subscribers, and it's a great channel. So if you're watching, you, you know, you know, I can't, I can't we say much more than that. Yeah, I won't stitch him up. <laughs> so on to Everton team news, and they've had a few players out recently. Chilly yeah. T, Branthway. Um, that's a big one. Patterson as well. Yeah. Brantway is a big one. I mean, it looks, like, it looks like Coleman's come back on because um, actually Young got sent off as well, mm. didn't he? But, so they had to play a young lad at right back. I think his name was Dixon. So that Patterson injury was a killer. But Brantway is brilliant. He's so, a super player. So they're really uh, missing him at the moment. So it's probably a better time to play him while he's still out. And in terms of our injury status, I think we are, we are looking okay apart from the usual suspects, isn't it? Yeah, the kind of three longer term ones, Tyler Adams, David Brooks and Ennis Unal. Um, Billing's got back problem apparently, uh, which is why he didn't play the cut. And he has said, I noticed that, he was saying about, and only said before the West Ham game, this yeah. few little illnesses still. And I was trying to think who won't involve with Kirk. It could have been one maybe. Yes, yeah. It's hard to know when it's a cup game because you think, well, they might have rotated anyway. Yes. But um, yeah, we're in a decent place, aren't we, from, you know, considering how many kind of injuries we had last season. We're not in a bad place at the moment, really. Do you want to know who the referee is? I, I really thought that you would stop doing this now because I'm going to get really angry. Well, you know Do what? you think I give a flying... It's, it's important because, look... I fucking give a shit. Maybe you, maybe you think it's not important because it's VAR anyway. It's, it's um, probably the name of the person who's running VAR that's the important thing. That's true. But as we saw in the week, sometimes the referee can make a bad decision like Peter Banks did by allowing Jared Bowen's goal, which was blatantly handball. How's, how's the lino not seen that, by the way? The lino's right. That's what I would have fuck off. Anyway, it's Stuart Atwell. Hey. Do, you to, do you want to tell you a little bit about him? Nope. I'm good at He sent off Milos Kirkes in the 79th minute of our away game against Wolves for a sliding tackle on Matt Doherty, which was considered dangerous. I forgot we had a man sent off in that. And Donny Ariola, of course, was not happy about the red card. The club appealed, but the decision stood. But Antoine Semenye's first half goal in that was enough to win the game. 
with 10 men. Tom, are you tweeting? Are you, are you done? Good? Let's do teams. Come on. Right then, we'll start off with Everton there, who are in a similar formation to us, 4 3 one What are you going for then? Yeah, so I'm going to try and be a little bit, I feel like I'm like, um, like... Rain man. No, I feel, I feel like, I'm. you know when you're like, you're playing football and you're like 5 up, so you start doing like step overs, trying things. Oh, we, you... I d I've done really well on opposition team losers. Yeah, well, season. keep it up then. Keep so I'm just going to go, oh, I'll take a little gamble there and there. Do you know what oh, I mean? um, but Pickford's in goal, don't worry about that. Join Pickford in goal. I think they're going to play Coleman at right back. Um, Stick with Michael Keane, James Tarkovsky, centre halves, Mikhelenko as the left back. Obviously, good mates with Ilya Zabani for us. Are you yep. Do you think Coleman's a good right back? Oh, I know what you're, oh, what you, I know what you're doing. Are it. you going to say? Oh, I was going to say if you think he's mustard. Mustard. I knew what you were doing there. Twat. Um, midfield, like I say, I think Irabunan's going to get a start in there with with Gay, um, Harrison, Jack Harrison, will play, who played with Andoni Iriola, which is mental. They feel like they're decades apart. Jack Harrison at New York. They both played together. You're joking. Yeah, I at, did not know that. At New York. I think wow. da David Villa was up front. It's mental. Wow. Um, but yeah, I think he'll be on one side. Dwight McNeil on the other. Um, and DeCorey, he was either the one that got the winner when they stayed up against yes. us. It was, yeah. But I'm going to take a little gamble. I'm going to say Calvert-Lewin's going to come out. Why? I don't know, a few rumours about him going. I think he'll probably stay. But also, just when I mean, they've played two games, didn't score a goal, and then they've won in the cup by three. True. And in Dai, in DE, whatever, however you pronounce. So I think look, I think they're going to give him a go. So I think he's going to leave the line. He kind of played just off Beto, it was, um, in the cup game. But I, I think they might give him a go up front. So I'm going to take Gamble and go with that. Right, let's do Bournemouth then. I, for one, am excited. Let's see the team now. Talk me through it, Tom. Kepa Ruiz of Balaga. Kepa's in, Kepa's in nets, baby. Kepa in nets. Nice little El Marino. We are not suggesting that that's actually going to be the song. We all know it's going to be Kepa, Kepa, Kepa. 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 So I'm just trying to think of our goalkeepers. Neto, Neto, Kepa, Kepa. Rocky, Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, we're quite good at them, aren't we? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would have thought Kepa would be in goal. Um, and I've wrote Kepa for you, not Ariza Balaga, just to help you out. Um, I think Arojo will come back in at right back. I do want to make a point, though. I thought Adam Smith at left back against West Ham was bloody brilliant, by the yeah. way. Gerard Bowen did nothing when he was on that side. Then he went up front and used his hand. I'm going to stick with Zabani and Sanessi, but it just feels mad that Housen can't play. But I think they've both been fine. He was quality. Uh, Kirk, as I assume, will come in at left back. I think it's got to be Cook and Christie. Don't think Scott's quite done enough. Um, Semenyo has to play on the wing. It has to, yeah. Clive, that has to play in the 10. And I think at the moment, it's a, at the moment, I don't think Simi's doing enough. I think it's a toss up between Tav and Dango. Yeah. And I just think Tav's going to start the game. Okay. Um, and then, but Dango, I've got, you know, there were. He's been good. Uh, yeah, I think he's been the most improved player this season. Yeah, definitely. Like country um, mile. He's yeah. been great. He's and you and I did say it when we went to the States. We, we went to the States for pre season. Um, and we said that he was the standout, wasn't he, in, yeah. in training and both friendly. So fair play to him. But. At the moment, I think he always says it about how 60-odd minutes he'll make changes. Yeah. I just think Dango's probably better one off the bench than Tav, maybe. Yeah. So I'm going to go with that. And then, obviously, the Brazilian, Evan Olsen. I'll leave the really line. Score. Getting his first goal. I'm calling it. We'd love... By the way, team. if you, you think, oh, Tom's calling it because he's in the island, what did I say the result would be against Forrest? 1-0. What did I say the result would be against Newcastle? You said it would be 1-0, Tom. He's scoring. You also said it would be one all in this one. Yeah, it will be. I can't change my mind now. I said the first three games of the Premier League will be one all. Um, there's one, basically, I'm going to do it because I think there's one side of me, I kind of alluded to it, that I think we should be too strong for Everton. Yeah? Yeah. The other side of it that thinks... Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche, Goodison Park, they need a result, we're, we're stuffed. So I'm just going to go in the middle mm. and go a 1-1 draw. Um, yeah, but Evan Olsen's going to get our goal. So Last time we played there was not Andoni Iriola ball. It, it wasn't because it was terrific. brand new. Yeah, no, true. Yeah. Then we galvanised, yep. as we did. So they haven't really seen us, apart from at home, where we stumbled over the line. Well, yeah, we were comfortable in an era. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, What's your prediction then? One all? Yeah, is that, is that, I'm is I'm that what you're going to stick with? No, I'm going to stick with I've got it right now. I've got Mine stick. is a 2 0 win. I like it. Evan Olsen gets first goal. Are you used to going with that as well? Or? Evan Olsen and Semenya, yeah. Okay, like it. Like What's it. yours? Let us know in the comments. We will read every single one. And if you can help us out, in terms of this place, mm. our studio, there is a little link for a, a uh, feedback form, afcbpodcast.com slash feedback. In that, leave your email address, leave your name, leave your number. 
Also, maybe leave your availability dates over the international break as well, because we all want to come together Mm. and we all want to get this place turned into a beautiful place where for not only for us to present, but for you to hang out on match day memorabilia. And if you can also leave us any bits as well. Absolutely. Frame it up nicely. Absolutely. Get it on the wall and we'll make it look beautiful. Painters, you decorators. Uh, if you're into your feng shui, let us know. We'd yeah. love to get you involved. And then we'll have a day, have a few beers, have some burgers. We'll, like, we'll get Joe to put something on. It'd be great. Yeah, yeah, we'll have some music on. We'll have a good laugh. Yeah, it'd be good fun. So, yeah, I really appreciate it if you can come and help. And just well done to you, mate. I know your throat's a bit... You've done well on this show. You've done really well. I'm really proud of you. Thanks, man. Right. Looking forward to going to Goodison Park. I will be there, regardless of this little ailment. And I look forward to seeing you there as well. Up the cherry. Fuck the PG. M-O-L. <laughs>